Hello, my name's Tony Marmont and uh, I live at a farm in Leicestershire. We have a small holding here, about 50 acres, and over the 40 years we've been here, I've been striving to make it self-sufficient. And just later on, you'll be able to see some of the measures I've taken, but in the meantime, we're looking at how we can decarbonize the world's transport fleet, a very important step from what we've learned while we've been working here. Well, I promised to show you around our home and what's here. And the first thing we want to see is some solar panels up here which do all our domestic hot water. That's about equivalent to a couple of immersion heaters and it's really very effective. And of course you don't add that to your electric bill, so it's cheaper. The beauty is that uh, these will work even when it's cloudy. They produce less heat than when it's uh, clear sunny, but, but it's a valuable addition at any time. And uh, of course they replace the electric water heater which is coming off your bill. So why doesn't everyone do it? Right, now I'm going to show you something else now. Follow me. These are the uh, panels that make electricity and uh, in most cases they go on, on the roof of your house. And the interesting point is that if every building in Britain had these on the roof, it would be ten times the power we need in the daylight hours and we wouldn't need the power station. Of course, they don't produce at night. That's something we've got to think about separately. So just to clarify, I mentioned before about we don't have to think about the night. Certainly we have, and we have to run the power stations, so we can't do away with them. But we could certainly put the uh, solar panels on the power station roofs, that would be ironic. And now I'm going to take you to our lake, which does all sorts of things I'm going to show you. Come and have a look. Well, now you're here, what does this lake do for us? Well, my wife is very keen on the, the wildlife, the, the geese and the ducks that come. I'm more interested in the electricity it makes at night, but also it's an emergency water supply for us, and more importantly, all the cattle we have on the farm pump their own water from here. They don't need made to supply water, so it's a, it has a multifunction, the lake does, and it looks nice, doesn't it? Well, next up, you've guessed it, it's wind. Follow me and have a look. So, what do these do for me? Well, they generate enough power to run four houses, and out of that power, I get all my power on the farm, and uh, personally, I think they're beautiful. And they've been here for a little over 20 years now, so they're very long-lived animals, and uh, I, I think they're a great feature. So, again, why doesn't every farm have them? Question. Uh, and now I'm going to show you a different part of the system. It makes electricity from water and I'll, you know, follow me in and I'll show you. And now we're into the uh, water turbine house. That's where water mills run with the uh, water from the lake. Um, it's a bit like if you look to the paddle steamer on the Mississippi and these big paddles going around to drive it along. Well, we have the paddles inside a case, and the water hits that and drives it. So it's the opposite to a paddle steamer. It makes power. And if I turn the unit on here, that's a manual turn on, it'll take a few seconds because the power in water is very big. And if you open a valve quickly, it'll smash all the pipe work. So we have to do it very slowly, and we bring this on every night at 7.30 when we want power in the house. And of course, it comes on when the lake's full anyway. So now the Starting up, you can hear it, really serious power. You can hear from the noise, it's producing a lot of electricity. So this is um, a dam, a small dam, to provide the filtration so that the water that's going into the turbines to make electricity doesn't have crayfish in it or trout or snails because they get killed. So as the water flows over that uh, little system there with the stainless steel uh, filter, the, the clean water goes inside the filter and the dirty water or any living matter goes over the top and sloughs over the top. So it does ensure that we don't kill the wildlife and that is important. I'm not sure that's happening on all the water systems in the world. I mean, particularly in the big ones, like, you know, the Nile down there, Swan, the Three Gorges. I, I think they don't take any precautions because they're too big. But it's, a, it's, it's important where we're working on farms and in Britain to have some protection for the wildlife, which we have. 
I've got a helicopter here, and you might think this is an anathema to all the things that I do to save CO2. But flying this helicopter is a great pleasure to me. I've been flying for many years, since 1943. But it uses a lot of CO2, it emits a lot of CO2, and I'm really quite ashamed of it. And so what this has done, it's enabled me, together with the experience we gained on making hydrogen from the renewable energy, and together with the experience now of forming a atmospheric fuel synthesis, I want to get a fuel which is carbon neutral for my helicopter. And so that has driven me into actually pushing AFS harder forward. I've put money into it to get it going, obviously. And I've got my faith in it, and hopefully one day I shall get my carbon neutral fuel to go in the helicopter, and then I shall feel at ease with the world at the moment. I feel a little bit embarrassed because everything else on here I do here is to cut CO2 and this just emits a lot. So anyway, nobody's perfect and neither am I. <laughs>